The National Lottery Commission has been funding uh, this project since the mid-1990s, and in every single survey, uh, the popularity of gambling in the age group 12 to 15, which is where the 9,000 children came from, has declined, and it's happening in overseas jurisdictions as well. So it's not, it's not just us. So the kids in that age group gamble less than, than their predecessors did. Yes. What are they doing and why? Why is, why is gambling suddenly? As it, it's advertised so much, it's made to look glamorous. Why, why are they not buying into it then? Which is good news, but why not? Well, we don't know for sure. I mean, the regulators would like to say that programmes like the mystery shoppers who harass retailers by send, having underage children present themselves to buy lottery tickets, that that sort of policing programme is having the desired effect. And that might well be so, but the fact that this is happening all around the world and also gambling amongst children themselves as opposed to commercial gambling, cards and so on, that's declining. This general decline... I think it must be something to do with the change in young teenage lifestyles. Uh, there's so much money. Are they spending their money on something else then, presumably? Well, I, I suspect they might be spending their money on text messaging, though we can't say yes. that in the survey. Uh, but within those groups, you, you did identify one, uh, some, some curious things. Ch children without siblings at home are more likely to gamble, presumably because they haven't got friends or their brothers and sisters to play with, is that? Yes, I think, it's, uh, I think that it's a, a social thing. Now, you know, we also collected information on drinking, smoking and drug-taking, and we found that the only child at home didn't behave any differently from other children. But in gambling, there was a, a markedly greater risk of both gambling and problem gambling amongst sole children. I think this is looking for friends, gathering at the yeah. f f slot machine arcade, as uh, somewhere to go to meet people and so on. You've done this survey, very extensive, um, a, a very uh, sort of stout survey. What conclusions are you, have you come to that you will be able then to pass on to, to regulators and to, uh, and to the, the Lottery Commission and other people like that who want, want to know what children are doing and what they're not doing? Well, uh, what we came up with uh, by looking at lots of different factors in the child's background uh, was we built a statistical model to predict the probability that a given child would gamble and then the probability that the child would be a problem gambler. Which is something we really want to know. Uh, yes, which, we can cut that off, as it were. Now, uh, I, I think the value in policy terms will be this will allow us to focus uh, gambling education on groups of children who are most at risk. Uh, for example, those in deprived schools. It's an interesting thing that if you measure school deprivation by free school meals, then children in places where there is a lot of deprivation actually gamble less than children in more affluent schools. Presumably children in more affluent schools have more disposable income to lose, though, is that yes. the theory? On the other, yes, but on the other hand, the children in deprived schools who do gamble have much higher uh, scores on the problem gambling index okay, that is applied.